In lesson five, uh, we're gonna analyze a truss, which is some of the ba one of the basic uh, or one of the examples that we go through in um, statics through mechanical engineering uh, education. Um, so uh, today I'm gonna teach you how to analyze a simple truss, and the whole idea is the same. You just have to define your elements and your model and any geometry that you're given, and apply the loads and uh, constraints and then you can uh, analyze your truss if everything is uh, uh, well or properly defined. So the truss I'm gonna analyze is in here is gonna be uh, something like this. I'm def uh, drawing the nodes. I guess this one shouldn't be here. So let me erase this node. Get back to here. So basically, I'm going to connect these nodes, and they all have to be in the same um, exact node. Uh, well, th definitely, I made a little uh, mistake in here, so let me erase them. This is my node, so I'm going to connect this to here. Also, connect this one to here, and uh, these nodes to each other. So basically, this is the node that uh, this is the uh, truss I'm going to analyze the, the model. I'm going to fix this uh, or apply this constraint on the left bottom uh, corner, which means u x or displacement in x direction is equal to zero, and u or displacement in y direction is equal to zero. And in the right side, I'm going to apply this restraint, which means u x. Uh, or ui is equal to zero, so we have no displacement in y direction, but we have probably some displacement in uh, x direction. So, uh, and then the reactions we have in this uh, uh, constraint is going to be some load in y direction and some load in x direction, whereas on the constraint on the right, we only have some uh, re reaction in the y direction, so we won't have any force in the x direction on this side. In order to avoid symmetry in this uh, truss and make things a little bit more complicated, I'm going to apply an Fy, or let me change these Fs into R because they are reactions and R is going to stand for reaction. And I'm going to say reaction 1 and reaction Y2. In order to avoid confusion, I'm going to call this one Fy and the node here, I'm going to apply an Fx. So we're going to have an external load of Fy applied on the on this node, and a load applied in x direction on this node. Um, the dimensions I'm going to give is that there, these nodes are going to be separated by 100 units each. So I have uh, 300 units length in the bottom. This, these, these ones at the top are also going to be 100 units. And the one in the middle is going to be 50 units away from this node. And also here is going to be 50, and it goes on. And the material I'm going to be using for uh, my uh, uh, elements is going to be steel with uh, the elasticity of 200 gigapascals and Parsons ratio of 0 0.03. This is for my material. And uh, the other thing I want to say in here about this analysis is that the element that we're going to use or we're going to define for this analysis is going to be link. This element has real constants, or yeah, I'm going to define a link, and a real constant, which basically what we need to define for this uh, element in real constants is the area, or cross-section area, for which I'm going to um, give one unit to make things uh, easy and uh, easy to calculate. And then uh, we're going to 
find the reaction forces and um, here and here and we're also going to see the deformation of the truss uh, according to the loads that we're applying in here. Let's say the the Fy that I'm going to apply is equal to 200 and the Fx that I'm going to apply is equal to 50 and um, go through and analyzing this uh, model. Okay, let's switch to ANSYS. Alright, we're in ANSYS so let's try doing um, or modeling the truss in here. The first thing is I'm going to preferences and select structures to make sure that everything I'm seeing in the future through this uh, example is going to be uh, structural. Click OK. Come to preprocessor and like always define an element. Add an element and I'm going to pick element link. And I stick with the first one 2D because uh, I'm not um, concerned about a 3D model still or right now. So let's pick the first one which is a 2D model or element and the options, well link 1 doesn't have any options so I can cancel this one and close and come to real constants add for link 1 the cross-sectional area I'm gonna give 1 just for convenience click OK and close. Now I go to material section click material models I'll see structural, linear, elastic uh, isotropic give uh, the uh, elasticity of 2 times 10 to the 11 and the Poisson's ratio of 3 and click OK so my material is also defined. Now I can come to modeling and uh, for this case I can basically just define uh, nodes and elements so I come to nodes and active CS and click or pick nodes. The first node is going to be at x0, y0, apply and then the next one is going to be at x of, of 100 and y is 0 then I go to 200 and then I go to 300 and apply and uh, then I can come to 50 and then the y of 100 and apply and then pick 150 and it's the y of 100 and again apply and then the y of 250 and y x of 250 and y of 100 click OK all my nodes are generated here then I can pick elements oh, oops, elements auto numbered through nodes pick each element, click apply, go from here, apply, apply, so basically this is the way you make your elements. Okay, so this is uh, the basic form of the truss that I generated and because I used nodes and elements to make this model I don't need to go through meshing so after modeling I can jump into loads come to analysis type and make sure that I'm doing a static analysis click OK now jump to define loads click apply and I'm still doing some structural for the first I'm gonna apply the constraints so on this node on the left well, bottom left node I'm gonna say give me UX and UY of 0 apply and then on the on node 4 I'm gonna say only UY is 0 and UX is uh, not 0 so the constraints are also defined now the other thing I want to apply is the force again on the nodes click on the node pick node 5 and on here we're gonna define a node an F of minus 200 and the reason I'm picking minus 200 is that my force is going to be applied uh, downwards which is in the negative direction uh, negative Y direction so I'm going to click up OK then click on the node again and this time I'm going to pick node 7 click OK 
and fx and again since I'm going to the negative negative x direction so I have to, I have to put minus 50 and click OK. So basically my model is ready now so what I have to do is to come to solution pick solve current ls OK and my solution is done. Now I can jump to general post process the first thing I want to see is the deformation of my truss. I always like to put uh, in deformation plus undeformed and this is the way um, my truss is deformed based on the load that we loads that we applied. If you if you see in here uh, the node 7 or node 4 has also moved to the right a little bit but node 1 has not shifted at all in x or y direction. Now counter counterplot go to nodal solution and the first thing I want to see is uh, displacement vector sum so we, ha we have no displacement in, ac in here but the maximum displacement um, total displacement actually is in uh, uh, top left corner now let's see the displacement in y direction again um, nothing in here and as you see in this graph all the values are in negative because my truss according to the laws that we applied to it is moving in a negative direction in according uh, to y coordinate so basically we can see um, the deformation of the truss let's see the formation in x direction as well again here we don't have any um, and, uh, uh, bottom left corner we don't have any deformation in x direction and uh, the other thing I want to do here list results and see reaction solution I want to see all the forces click OK we only have two um, nodes that need reactions the one here and the one in here and as you see for node 1 which was this node we have an fx of 50 and the fy of 183.33 on here and the reason is that fy was closest to node to this node than to the other node and on node 4 which was this node we only have fy or reaction in the four in the y direction of 16.67 um, which totals the loads to 50 and 200 which were the loads that we applied to the entire uh, truss. Let's see what we can get from nodal solution. Click here and let's see if we can get displacement in x direction for all the nodes. Yes. Node 1 there is no displacement in y direction and you can get displacement for all of the nodes based on uh, the loads that we applied to the entire truss. We can do the same thing for y direction. Again, there is no displacement in y direction for node 1, but and also node 4 doesn't have any displacement in y direction according to the constraint we applied to node 4. But the, all the other nodes, nodes 2, 3, 5, 6, and 7 have negative displacements. So basically, this is uh, how you um, define a truss, apply loads and uh, your constraints and do the analysis and see the deformation of your truss based on the loads that you've applied and also um, you can uh, uh, see the nodal uh, solutions f and get a displacement for each node and also you can see the reaction forces on, on the nodes that you have constraints on. And this concludes lesson 5 on FEA with ANSYS.